Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're joined this afternoon by the Mayor of London, Ed Holder, and the Medical Officer of Health of the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. A welcome this afternoon to the media who are joining us for today's briefing and a reminder that when you do submit your questions using the question form here on Microsoft Teams, if you could please indicate your name, your media outlet, and who your question is directed to. And because we do have the questions moving fairly quickly, uh, it's better not to wait until too long in the briefing to submit your questions in case uh, we adjourn and you have not yet had your question asked. A welcome this afternoon also to folks who are tuning in on Rogers Television, as well as the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel, listeners to Global News Radio, AM 980 CFPL, and folks who are tuning in on the CTV London website. Let's begin with our opening remarks today, and we'll start with Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Well, thank you, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. So today is Budget Day at Queen's Park. Look, we're expecting to receive details shortly after four o'clock this afternoon, and hopeful for good news for Londoners and London businesses. Over the last several weeks, we've had a chance to advocate on behalf of our community with our provincial partners in order to ensure our needs are not only heard, but are also understood. Uh, despite London's ongoing recovery through this pandemic, both economic and social, we know a lot of people and a lot of businesses are still hurting as a result of the pandemic. So this afternoon's budget from Queen's Park represents an opportunity to ease the burden. And as mentioned, I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll see when those details are released in just a couple of hours from now. And on a separate topic, looking ahead to tomorrow, we're going to get our latest update on London's economy when Stats Canada releases its employment report for the month of October. You'll recall we added 4,200 jobs during the month of September, pushing us up to 2,000, more than 2,000, 22,300 jobs over the last three months. Now, since the onset of the pandemic and ensuring shutdowns in March, London's economy has added jobs at a faster rate than, than many other Ontario cities, including Toronto, Kitchener, Waterloo, Hamilton and Windsor. In fact, based on September's numbers, we had more people employed in September 2020 than we did in September 2019. Barrie, Ontario is the only other mid to large size city in Ontario that can claim year over year employment growth. So again, we'll wait to see what October's numbers look like uh, when they're released tomorrow morning. But in the meantime, and as always, I encourage anyone who's searching for a job or a career change to visit londonjobsnow.ca, especially now uh, during this pandemic when uh, getting a job or considering that career change is more important than ever. Lastly, if you've checked the weather forecast recently and you don't have to go too far to see it, you'll have noticed we're expecting a stretch of unseasonably mild weather, double digit temperatures basically every day from now until late next week. Let's take advantage of that and spend as much time outdoors as possible. I know that sounds a lot like what Dr. Mackey would say, but I'm telling you it's also uh, equally important uh, as we say it. It's great for physical activity, but it also reduces the likelihood of COVID transmission. Once this warm spell is gone, it seems unlikely we'll get another one like it until spring. So let's use this time to get out and enjoy it, help to keep our numbers relatively low where they've been over the last several days. And in the words of Warden uh, Burkhardt Jessen, continue to physically distance, wear your mask, watch your crowd size and stay safe. Dr. Mackey, please over to you. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. I uh, really appreciate those messages. So at uh, straight to the case count, we uh, we did have an additional uh, mortality in the uh, Middlesex London area yesterday. Unfortunately, uh, the case count was uh, quite moderate. Uh, but unfortunately, we did have a death. Provincially, we uh, see the trend continuing at about a, th a thousand cases per day. The uh, provincial trend that is concerning remains the percentage positivity, which has now climbed into uh, roughly 10%. Uh, uh, that's not where it was at the beginning of the pandemic uh, in wave one, but it's certainly, the, sorry, 2%. It, it certainly is uh, concerning to see that trend in percent positivity continue to climb. Uh, there have been a number of uh, changes across the public health landscape over the past week. I know we've got some questions about those. Uh, so Dan, I'll, I think I'll leave it there and uh, happy to take help take any questions. 
All right, thank you, Dr. Mackey. Uh, we do have a number of questions, so let's get to those right away. Our first couple of questions are from Jennifer Beeman at the London Free Press, and Dr. Mackey, they're both for you. Uh, Dr. Mackey, are there any details you're able to provide about the latest death being reported uh, in the Middlesex London region? Was her case linked to an outbreak or close contact? Uh, so the latest death is actually uh, an elderly gentleman, uh, a gentleman who is uh, well over 80 and uh, not linked to an outbreak uh, or close contact. The individual uh, lived at home uh, before they died. And a follow-up question, Dr. Mackey from Jennifer Beeman. Dr. Mackey, 10 of the new cases since Monday are in people 50 and older. Are we seeing the second wave spread into older age groups? Well, certainly we're, we're seeing more cases in, in people 50 and older than we were in September, where it really was the uh, 20s and 30s and actually even uh, people in their late teens that were dominating the case counts here locally. So uh, we're, we're seeing that and that's a trend that you've seen around the world uh, in the second wave. You've seen the second wave move through the younger age groups uh, young adults quite quickly and then uh, as it reaches the tipping point does start to spill over into the uh, elderly population and those that are more uh, vulnerable to bad outcomes. Um, fortunately our uh, mortality rate remains low and uh, the number of cases in long-term care you know is not dramatically increasing as it did in the first wave um, but you know we are relatively early in this pandemic uh, wave. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Let's go to our next question. Our next question um, comes from Ryan Payette at the London Free Press. Dr. Mackey, elite minor hockey teams will start playing internal games this coming weekend. Once that begins, are they locked into a bubble for the next two months as the health unit order has been interpreted by some, or is there still a chance to play externally? For example, London Junior Knights versus Elgin Middlesex within the same health unit jurisdiction. So a lot of detail in that question, Dr. Mackey. Yeah, so I appreciate the question. The uh, There isn't a local order on this. The local, the, the rules that we're following are the provincial rules, which really cap the, uh, a league or a subset of a league at 50 people. So the provincial rules uh, do allow uh, for, uh, for uh, sports to be played the, the variation that you're seeing uh, for this particular group is you're, you're likely to have more uh, contact than you would in, you know, Pee Wee League, for example, where the organizers are really working to redesign the training and the game so that there is no contact between uh, between players on the ice. Uh, and so that the provincial uh, government has worked with those leagues on what those rules would be. Uh, they would be best placed to interpret the details of, of those rules. All right, thank you, Dr. Mackey. And I did want to um, to mention something, and this is just a clarification on the information related to the death that is included in today's update on the website. Uh, it, it is uh, being reported as a woman in her 90s. So just that information that is uh, is on the dashboard today. All right, let's go to the next question. The next question is uh, again a follow up from Jennifer Beeman, Dr. Mackey. Uh, Dr. Mackey, what is the main driver of cases in the last week? Is it outbreak, close contact, or is there no known source? On what level would you say community transmission is at in London and Middlesex County? Thank you for the question. Uh, you know, we have really hovered around that 10 cases per 100,000 per week. Uh, that is the deciding factor. Um, I will be discussing with the Chief Medical Officer of Health later today some of the related issues. Um, we we aren't uh, certain at this point exactly where uh, this will uh, this this community will end up by the weekend, but we'll certainly make that public as soon as we can. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Kate Dubinsky has a question uh, that she has, has brought in. And uh, Dr. Mackey, uh, this question is for you, but uh, Mayor Holder, Kate is suggesting that if you want to weigh in, she would welcome your comment as well. 
a freedom march is planned for Saturday in Aylmer. Now, Kate recognizes that that doesn't fall within this jurisdiction, but on Friday, the Aylmer Church of God is holding a freedom bonfire and is saying that those want to go to the bonfire and stay for the next day anti-mask rally can stay at local homes. I'm guessing that this is people from London who are being invited to attend these. Uh, Dr. Mackey, Mayor Holder, what do you think of the possibility that people will be traveling from our region to Aylmer, staying there overnight in local homes and attending a large rally? How worried are you about the public health implications and what are the public health risks? You know, the town of Aylmer has proven what those risks are. This is a community that has 89 cases of COVID-19 since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, that tiny community has more than a quarter of the cases that come from across Elgin, Middle, uh, sorry, Elgin uh, and Oxford counties, which includes Stratford and, Stra and uh, St. Thomas. Uh, so, you know, we know this is exactly the sort of thing that spreads COVID very efficiently. Uh, so it's disappointing that people are, you know, blatantly uh, disregarding the health of themselves and others. Uh, at this late in the pandemic when we know that this is something that can likely have you know uh, serious implications including deaths. Mayor Holder. Uh, thanks for the question Kate. Look uh, as you'll appreciate uh, in my role uh, I'm absolutely focused on London and it's certainly my hope that no one from London attends this and is also my hope that no one from London opens their home to attendees who choose to participate uh, in this rally. Uh, I, I want to make that absolutely clear. Thank you very much uh, to both of you for those responses. Let's move on to our next question. Um, and it was a clarification on the dashboard today on the Health Unit website, so we've addressed that. Uh, that actually brings us, gentlemen, to the end of our questions. Um, so there we are. Um, I would like to thank you both very much for your time this afternoon and for uh, your insights and a reminder that our next virtual media briefing is coming up on Monday afternoon at two o'clock. So between now and then, have a great weekend as Mayor Holder suggested. Enjoy the weather. It may be our last chance at some very nice weather for quite some time and uh, wear a mask, wash your hands and take care of each other. We will see you next week. Have a great rest of the day.